everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division for the East Coast Tournament. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Play Demic. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell button so you get the notification every time there is a new live stream or a new video. Also, you can visit golfclashtournament.com where you can find tournament guides, you know, general uh, video guides for the tour play, golden shot. But also, if you subscribe to patreon.com slash golfclashtom, you can get the text guys specifically for the tournament. But also, that you can access behind the scenes on the website to get um, general text guide for every course in the game. And in this playthrough, you can see here on the right hand side of the screen, you can find elevation adjustments for every hole and every shot that's uh, what i'm going to refer to please if you do struggle with elevation watch the elevation guide which will definitely help you know what i'm talking about also it's going to be a mix of my shots and my opponent's shots trying to give you the best possible uh, playthrough now before the tournament starts have in mind the the wins that is displayed here in the shots are not the ones that we're going to have in the tournament at least not what we know of because we all we don't know that until it starts so let's go hole number one we're gonna play with a quarterback three top and max side here in this example you know we can play right side we can play left side that's up to us to decide which way we want to go i choose the right side here playing with a power three ball the power three ball so i don't have to overpower much and then quarterback based on curl having an extra mile uh, in level 6 and below the curl won't be enough uh, and that's going to be a, a big problem for you trying to stay away from the bunkers on the other side 10% extra for the drive and if you want to choose the drive on the left hand side it's the same elevation the only difference is that now the second shot from the right hand side is going to be much easier than what we would be having from the left hand side so look here now, we do have an open shot towards the pin, so we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use three to four and a half bar side spin to the left because the fairway slightly slopes uh, left to right here, and then two to three bars back spin, and you know this is a situation where you can kind of be innovative and use whatever spin adjustment you feel comfortable with. You don't have to follow this exact spin adjustment, and obviously, the spin adjustments is the depended on the club range like if you do have a shorter drive you might gonna have to reduce the spin or add a little spin depending on position that's the same if you're gonna go a little bit longer so hole number two part three good chance for an hole in one in my opinion and we're gonna start with playing with a wood club and that's what we're gonna do with whatever type of wind here if you can spend a katana the katana would be better because then we don't have to go with much curl max right side spin which is four and a half bar side spin and then we're going to go without any top spin or back spin you can play with back spin and top spin as well it all depends on what you feel comfortable with the trick here on this uh, part three is that we do want to get the ball on the top of the green to fall back down towards the pin and as i said 10 percent extra for that one and we used half a ball of curl you can see it gets up there falling back down that's the way you approach the pin on hole number two for hole number three you're gonna see a slight older version of this hole we haven't had this in a tournament in a very very long time and here you can see that i play with a marlin even though it's a par five 10 percent extra is what we need here for the drive but you are most likely a bit confused here, especially if you have played this hole before, because you know now, with a Marlin ball, I will not be able to reach for the green in two. And no, that's correct, and you would not be able to reach with to the green in two, even if you would be playing with a Berserker ball. The reason for that is to be able to reach for the green, we need to reach over to the, uh, you can see the bunker and the rough there as we started with the second, or like our opponent started with his second shot, is that we need to reach over there then we need to bounce over roll through the rough and get there and that's not gonna be any club that we're playing rookie division with that's gonna be able to do that not even the big topper so uh, that's not gonna be a possibility therefore i choose a lower level ball so i'm not gonna spend and waste any of the other balls that might come handy 
in a later stage or uh, or interplay. So I play with a lower level ball, just gonna lay up, make sure that I'm not going into the rough. Then the second shot is going to be with the big dog, uh, as it gives me the most top spin and distance. And trying to bounce over the rough area here in the center, and then just gonna lay up and go for the pin in three. So this course here is gonna be, you know, the majority is going to be making birdies instead of making eagles. And that's because, once again, we cannot reach over the rough and the sand if we're not having absolute superior clubs like Thor Sam level 6, Apocalypse level 6, level 7. And those clubs is not something that we see often playing in rookie division. Elevation for second shot and third shot, as you can see on the sheet there on the right hand side, is zero. So we're not gonna add or subtract anything for those shots, we're just gonna play it as it is. It's still gonna be tough enough uh, managing this eagle, or if so, managing the birdie. So, now for the third shot, we're gonna play for uh, the pin, obviously. And then we're gonna use the back of the green, a little bit like what our opponent did do, but we're gonna use a, a higher point of the green so we get more roll. And I'm not saying that that's going to be the best way to, uh, to approach the pin, but it's definitely the best way to have a chance for the pin and also secure the birdie big time. You can, as you can see, I'm going back here trying to mixture a little bit with the fringe and the fairway just there by the rough. But then you can see with a bad shot or a bad adjustment, we might gonna go into the rough or into the sand. And then we even endangering the birdie. So in the end, I'm choosing the back end of the green. Just having in mind that, you know, I, that I'm looking for an eagle, obviously. But if I'm making a birdie, that's not gonna be the end of the world as the majority of the players is gonna do the same. So an eagle here is basically what an eagle would have been on a par four or an hole in one on a par three, like an extra. So see it like that, then you're gonna have a different way of looking at this hole. Now we go over to hole four and here it's snowing, but yeah, it's an older recording, have that in mind, we're gonna have it, it's gonna be sunny. So the only thing that we need to focus on do we play the hole the same way with snow as without snow? Yes, we do. It's not going to have any effect whatsoever. So we're going to play with a mauling ball in this example, playing with a bounce on the fairway underneath the tree, the tree branch, and we're going to try to just lay up on the other side. If we do have a crosswind or a headwind, I would suggest, though, to play with a power one ball or a power two ball. And the reason for that is because I don't want you to overpower if not absolutely have to. Because I do believe that playing this route that we are doing now is absolutely the best way to give ourselves an opportunity for the eagle, but also making sure that we're not going to do what our opponent is going to do. Because with lower level rough irons and sandwich clubs, we will, if we go into the rough or into the sand on the right hand side, be having a bit of a problem getting the ball to the green in two. So, elevation, as you can see once again on the sheet, it's 10% downhill, and just when we wait for our opponent, downhill means we need to add. Downhill means that the ball is going to be affected more by the wind. That's such an important thing to have in mind, that if you just have that going uh, around in your head, that okay, Tommy said we play downhill, that means adding. Then it doesn't. Then you don't really have to be the master of elevation. But if you just need know that you need to add a little more, then add a little more. Then at least you're gonna get closer to a better end result. So second shot. Let's go for the eagle here. So I'm using the fairway to bounce towards the pin. I've always done that on this course, and I'm gonna most likely continue do so. Hard, obviously, with lower level ball, uh, lower level clubs with a crap ball guideline it's very hard to dial a shot like this in because we don't really know if we are at exact the same and right position every single time no elevation for the second shot and we're aiming for the pin using a little bit of backspin and uh, that's going to be uh, the hopefully the trick to get this baby in the hole so in the end par four good chance for an eagle we're gonna see a decent amount of eagle on this very nice par four of the city park so we go quickly to city park hole three no hole five par three 
and I'm playing left hand side. Left hand side to try to stay away from the bumpy green because I don't have backspin enough on my backbone level 5. So I cannot really approach the pin directly. So I'm trying uh, a, a shot where I'm using uh, 2 to 3 bars backspin, I'm using side spin to the right and also a little curl to the right, trying to bounce over that little hump, roll down towards the pin. If I would be having a, a club that gives me four and a half bar backspin minimum, then I would be playing directly at the green as our opponent. I would not play it as to the left as our opponent is doing, but I would play it to the right of that hump there, because that would be still an okay chance getting it in the hole, but it's for sure not going to be an easy one to get in the hole when it's a bumpy, uh, bumpy green and bumpy fairway. 10% extra for hole number five. So, hole number six, par five, tough par five. We're gonna come to a couple of tough holes now. And I would say, first, we need to have in mind here that we're playing with lower level clubs, which means that we might see people playing with lower clubs than an extra mile level five. Then we're gonna lay up. We're gonna use as much side spin to the right possible, one to three bars backspin, depending on how much wind we're gonna have. In this scenario, I play one and a half bar backspin and we're going to have to over adjust 10%. And my plan here now is to not follow the, right, uh, the route on the right because that's not gonna be possible with that little topspin that we're having on our club. We cannot clear the rough by any means. So we lay up, get very close to the rough, and then we're gonna have to be very spot on with our second shot. Five bars top spin, as much side spin to the right possible. And we're going to play it very close to the rough there. We cannot play through the trees, that's no option. So we have to play it out there to the left. And therefore, a club like the big dog, which gives us distance and curl. Those are the key aspects that you're looking for. Distance and curl, or like power and curl. There is nothing that is called distance. But power as a stat and curl as a stat, because those attributes will be super valuable while trying to approach the pin here. Slight amount of overpower, but max curl. And with max curl, I mean as much curl as you possibly can get. And that's going to possibly take you to the green. If in a worst case scenario, it's gonna get you to the fringe or to the fairway just by the green, and then you're gonna have a short wedge making the eagle. Hole number seven, last of the part threes. If we do have the backspin, and now I'm talking five and a half, six bar backspin, then we can approach the pin directly by going to the green. But as we don't have that with the rocket level eight, then we're going to play with the Viper and bounce over the bunker up towards the pin. And here you can obviously spot that going directly over all the obstacles is definitely going to be more secure than bouncing over it. Because if we misadjust here now, we're going to be in the sand and that's going to danger making a, uh, making a birdie. So, <clears throat> but obviously if we don't have the backspin enough on our driver, we cannot play directly at the green. So let's just hope in that case that, or let's say like this, if you do have five and a half bar backspin, you're going to have a big advantage over your opponent that might not have it themselves. 10% extra for the shot there. So, hole number eight, par four, one of the toughest par four in the whole game, in my opinion. The reason for that, count the bunkers, you know, it's eight bunkers, just on the fairway. And you're going to see me mess up this try, but I think it's a valuable lesson for us. And that's why I get this one in the playthrough as well. We, well our plan is to get into the final hole there in between the two uh, front bunkers on the right hand side. That's the plan. Max left side spin and you will see that I might use a little bit too much topspin. But also look at this inconsistency when we bounce. Look at this roll that comes there. That's not a normal roll for a ball, but it happens. And it happens on this course pretty uh, frequently. 10% extra, but getting into the sand, you cannot reach for the green in two. Then we have to lay up. And if we're going to lay up, it's going to be a short iron most likely towards the pin, or it's going to be a wedge depending on how close you are to the green. But this is a course where there will be so many people making par instead of birdies. So make sure that you're spot on, rather play a little bit more on the safe side, but the key is power three ball, 
play with a second shot club that gives you a lot of distance. Big dog preferred. And then you should have no problem if you make the drive to the fairway to get to the green in two. But if you lay up, you can try and here, you know, our opponents already have a birdie. The worst score we can get is a par. And then we can gamble. We can go for the dunk or we can just bounce towards the pin. I go for the dunk because I do feel confident when it comes to going for the dunk from distance. Have in mind that when you play this shot, you play it uphill. So it's very important here that you can see here, we're shooting from a lower point to a higher point, which means that the ball is gonna be less affected by the wind. Hole number nine now, after hole eight, we come to hole nine, slightly easier, but we're gonna, with lower level clubs, we are going to have to be spot on here. The drive is everything. If you make the drive into the rough, you cannot reach for the green two. That's just how it works. Max right side spin and two bars top spin. I would consider playing with three bars top spin to be the best top spin uh, top spin amount. Approximately half of the red ring inside the rough line, and we go play with maximum distance with a five percent over adjustment. Five. That's not much, but very important. And then we go with half a ball of curl to the right. If you use too much curl, you're gonna be in the rough, 100%. So use half a ball of curl, that's enough. Then you're gonna get yourself to the fairway, then you can reach for the spot here when we're gonna bounce towards the pin. If you choose the left-hand side during your drive, you cannot reach for the green. That's why that's no option. It fools you. I know, it has done that to me. So we play right with the drive, no questions asked. Uh, so, second shot, minus 10%. So this is an uphill adjustment. Once again, uphill means that the ball is going to be affected less by the wind. So we're going to adjust with the big dog, bouncing on the fairway here over towards the green. And the reason I'm using the big dog is that to make sure that if I go short with my drive, I'm still going to have the distance for it. We're coming in very, very hot, getting that one in for a nice little albatross. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this playthrough for Rookie Division. I hope you learned something, or at least got yourself an idea on how to approach these courses in the tournament, the East Coast Tournament. So, subscribe to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. We have a drive now this November. We have a November special. Check it out. Also, visit golfclashtommy.com for more Golf Clash related content. Video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. Good luck.